So what I don't understand is why, what is the point of saying you want privacy and doing a diff- doing things in a different way and then just it being all about you rather than, you know, doing it to, you know, to help your country and, and serve? Well, she said, um, she had a press conference on the opening day of the tour, the vice president, and she said the reason they were invited was that she had heard their story on Netflix. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that surprised me that she didn't seem to know or she seemed to base the entire invite on, on a six-part documentary, which we know quite a bit of it was kind of a little bit kind of fast and loose with the truth and representation of, of well, the UK. Well, fast and loose with the family. truth, a lot of it was complete baloney. But the reality is that I think that this was a chance for the government of Colombia that's not been doing too great to be put on a sideshow, um, take away, have a distraction from the problems they're facing at home. There's a couple of things I want to pull out of, of, of this tour that, that has kind of been underreported, I think. There, there's, on the final day in Cali, um, at a forum that they attended, Megan was with the president of the Open Society Foundation. Now, this is, a, this is an organisation I'm not aware of in the UK. I think people might know about it in America. But it's a huge funder of left-wing political causes around the world and also the Democrats in the United States. Is or was Megan trying to get involved in politics? Is she positioning herself, do you think, with this with this big display with the Vice President of, of, of Colombia, front and centre? Is she, is she forcing her way into, into kind of American politics now? I think if she got involved in American politics with the title of the Duchess of Sussex, she'd be eaten alive. I think she may think that she's got the the wherewithal to you know to make to make it. I think a lot of the Democrats would run a mile. Didn't they have a, a war to get rid of the British royals in America? I think, you know, I think really if you want to be a serious politician, then just go by the name of Meghan Markle. But, uh, but I don't think she's got the the clout or the uh, the background to be a serious politician. I don't think they should be able to. T- she would be able to take the criticism or the scrutiny. Would be one of the things I think with Meghan. I just don't think. I mean, it's a dirty game. Yeah. And I think that she, you know if she thinks she's been treated badly by the the British press, then I think that, you know, there's going to be an awful lot worse if you enter the world of politics in America. Well, let's see what happens in the next couple of months as the US election, you know, is on the horizon. There's another element, and it might be just in, in a media bubble, but last week we spoke about, tongue-in-cheek said they could accept an invite from anywhere. Would they accept an invite from North Korea, for instance? But <laughs> the, the, from speaking to people on the ground, there were certain restrictions on the press. So all the pictures that came out were uh, from, a, from an agreed photographer. There was rotocopy that was sent out, that came out via the Archwell team and it was quite it was quite mundane there wasn't anything exciting in it there weren't very many comment uh, quotes from people who had met the couple or anything like that and the videos that were presented from this trip um, were silent and some are suggesting was that because there weren't many cheers or there were there were comments coming out but we joked about I joked about North Korea last week but the restrictions on the press the control that Archwell had on this tour would, would make Kim Jong-un blush, to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, this is exactly what we expected. I mean, the, the reality is they don't like criticism. The people around them, the trolls and all these morons, they don't like criticism. Uh, they give it out, but they can't take it. And um, you can't really say that you are into open policy, open uh, free speech and things like that if you're controlling every step. It's a little bit strange, to be honest. Um, but it reminds me, you know, like going to uh, having a tour where you can't have any criticism or free press reporting on it. It's a bit like what happened with the, you know, 1938, you know, sorry, when, when the Duke and Duchess of Windsor went to the Nazi Germany to look at the housing projects. You know, it was all controlled by the the Nazis who were doing out, pumping out their propaganda. All the, I'm not comparing the Colombian government to the Nazis or even Meghan and, and Harry. What I'm saying is that, you know, you do need a free press. I know that the Royal Rota comes, after, comes under attack for being... Supine, I think it was been described. Um, but you know, it's, it's by journalists like yourself and me that will watch things and see things, and speak and interview people and report on what's actually happening. So, look, my feeling is it was just a PR puff. It was a PR puff, and they, they it was quite successful PR puff because they got nothing else was going on. I mean, it was, they picked the time of August yeah. because they knew they wouldn't clash with anything else, really. But it remains vague to me the reasons for going. It totally does. Um, Self promotion, simple as that. For the, for the couple, and yeah. for the, for the, but we don't know really what And distraction what for Colombia yeah. about all the nonsense that's going on there. There's a lot of problems um, in Colombia. The government, we get a lot of criticism. It gives them a chance to sort of, you know, um, to, to have a distraction from their problems. Finally, on the Sussexes, uh, where next do you think they could end up? 
Well, it's difficult to say. I mean, you know, as you say, North Korea, Russia, I don't know. The reality is I think that they'll have to wait and be invited because, you know, the, the, if they want to do it on that scale where you're involving political figures, you know, it needs it needs to be a personal connection. I think they need to work out what they want to do. They're not, they don't come across as particularly authentic. If you are trying to rebuild your um, reputation, they've just lost their... their CEO, and they, they seem to not be able to hang on to staff. I think you've got to start build from the bottom and not have these grand moments. Just do things that are authentic and do things that are real rather than sort of staged with, you know, loads of different outfit changes. Just do some real, real work in America, maybe, and people won't start to believe you. Mm, OK. Well, let, let's move on to something which I think is very worthwhile. Um, the King... OK, has gone to Southport. And we get a lot of US viewers, so I just want to explain what happened. A couple of weeks ago, three children were, were killed at a Taylor Swift-themed party. It was, it was a huge um, atrocity in the, in the UK and made lots of coverage. Led to some street riots in the UK, led to, you know, some, some disorder. Um, so the king has gone to Southport. Um, he has met... Some of the families and children who were there when this happened, he's met some of the 999 heroes. And in London, he's meeting um, some of the families of the three bereaved children. This is a huge moment for the king, a very important step. This is what the king should be doing, right? Well, the king's coming out to the second anniversary uh, of his reign and I think he's well established now. I think this is the sort of thing he should be doing. Yeah, he's, he is the head of state, but he's also the head of nation, he's there to unify the nation. And after this, frankly, heinous crime, um, it was, it, you know, there was a lot of disorder, a lot of misinformation that led to that disorder as well, actually. Um, and I think it's quite important that the king has a role that is to unify people and to try to bring them together. But he'll also be meeting the uh, bereaved families, which is going to be very emotional. It's, it's going to be private um, in London. But the, the the point of it is, is that's part of his role, and I think it's absolutely right that he does it. And he's a very compassionate man, someone I think that, you know, you've met him, I've known him many years, and I, I think that he's somebody that um, has a great empathy with people, particularly in difficult situations like this. Yeah, too right. I mean, he's broken off his holiday. He only started his holiday this week, officially up at Balmoral, but he's, he's broken off his holiday. Well, it's very important, I think, and he will see that. And, you know, he was quite alarmed by the disorder that followed, issued statements about that um, and I think he's you know he's basically you know showing that he really does care about the country and the people who live within it and he's spent most of his life and his working life trying to work for um, closer relations interfaith relations community relations and he would be not you know horrified at seeing some of the things that were happening on the streets and it's uh, a tinderbox you know and, and that's something he's fully aware.